uh, from mechanical point of view, uh, what is required for the high rise? Uh, we should we should focus on them because these systems become mandatory uh, if the building is high rise. But I just I would like to emphasize that not the building height is only uh, input to decide whether these systems are uh, mandatory or not. Uh, even if the building is not high rise, maybe we need to provide these systems such as sprinkler system or landing wall system uh, to get these advantages on the architectural design. I will explain you how uh, in the following slides, but uh, first uh, I would like to uh, emphasize this before starting the main part of the presentation. Uh, but for the high rise building, for the residential building, if the construction height exceeds uh, 51.5 meters, or for the non-residential building, the construction height exceeds 30.5 meters, the autopatic sprinkler system becomes mandatory. And uh, informing the mechanical designer is the responsibility of the architecture uh, regarding the construction height. That's why you need to know that, for example, some of the investors uh, some of the investors of residential buildings are limiting the construction heights at 50, 51 meter, uh, not to provide a sprinkler system. They are limiting their height uh, to, 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 to make a, uh, how to, to cut the expenses during the construction phase. That's why the architects should ask uh, the investor whether they are. Uh, they they have knowledge about the uh, sprinkler or landing wall system mandatories regarding the fire code or not, and then you decide the exact construction construction height during your uh, project. And for the hotel and dormitory, it's a little bit different. They are separated from the rest of the building. If the construction height exceeds uh, twenty one point five meters, the sprinkler system becomes mandatory as per Turkish fire code. Um, and the landing wall system uh, <coughs> and the landing wall system becomes mandatory for the high rise building it's already it's it's combined with the sprinkler system for the for for this combined system we are calling them a water based suppression systems all together the sprinkler system landing wall system and also the fire hose cabinets, but we will see how, how it will change our architectural design when we provide these systems. And from the mechanical, from also the mechanical uh, point of view, but uh, the smoke, it, 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 it is the smoke issue. The pressurization systems become mandatory if the construction height exceeds uh, 51.5 meters. Uh, or even if our building is not uh, exceeding 51.5 meter, if the stairwell height exceeds 30.5 meter, or the stair if the stairwell uh, serves uh, more than four basement floor, the pressurization system becomes mandatory as per Turkish fire code. The international standards are a little bit different from our uh, local code. For example, regarding the NFPA. The limitation is 23 for the pressurization of the staircases. And they are limiting the number of basement floor uh, with one only one floor. For example, if you are if you are responsible for the international project and you have two basement floors, uh, the pressurization systems become mandatory as per international building code or as per NFPA. That's why uh, from the beginning of the project, it would be better to decide the main reference uh, code uh, to understand what we need to provide for this specific building. And also for the building where the construction height exceeds uh, 51.5 meters, we need to provide fire service access elevators separate from circulation elevators. It is dedicated for the usage of the fire brigade during a fire incident. And it, it, it also should be pressurized by a positive pressurization fan. And also for the high rise building, if the construction height uh, exceeds 51.5 meter, we, we also need to provide we also need to provide a corridor smoke exhaust system and it should need a, it, it requires a great uh, coordination or with the architectural team and the mechanical team to find some, vertical shafts because for each 
a corridor, we need to provide one exhaust shaft and at least two separate makeup shafts. I will explain with all details. It's very important if we are not coordinating it at the beginning of the project and if we finalize the structural design, it would be it, it becomes really impossible to find a required area of shafts for this corridor smoke exhaust system. It's, that's, it's also the responsibility of the architect coordinate these shots and the shot locations on a high-rise building, within the high-rise building. And also for the hotel and dormitory buildings, it's a little bit different. Even if the building is not a high-rise, even if you have a, uh, if, even if you have a only two or three story building, but if it's, if the, if the building uh, sectional area is large, it means if you have some long corridors, more than 45 meters, you should either provide a you should either provide a sectional zone doors, smoke proof doors, or you need to provide corridor smoke exhaust system. It's also decided by the architect. If the architect if the architect is okay with providing a door for each forty five meters, then you can you 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 are allowed to omit smoke exhaust system. But normally these doors are not preferred by the architects due to the decorative uh, issues. That's why in, in, in most of the hotel buildings, uh, we have corridor smoke exhaust system uh, as well. And also, uh, this is a very important issue. This is specific to Turkish fire code. If we don't have a 100 centimeter height parapet, two hour fire rated parapet on the facade between the floors, the Turkish fire code requires a closely located sprinkler heads for the facade protection. Uh, the, for, the, for the curtain walls, uh, in Turkish, it, it's called Gider Mecepe. If you have glazing uh, facade for your building, it is really hard to provide these one centimeter spandrel panels on the facade because it's really affect negatively the outer look of your building. That's why if you if you are not doing if you are not providing 100 centimeters of parapet between each floor, uh, you need to inform the mechanical designer uh, to this to 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 process their design to have a closely located facade protection sprinklers. Otherwise, when you finalize the project and when you are trying to hand it, hand over to the owner uh, during the uh, I don't know the exact name, Rufsat phase, when you are trying to get the permit for your building. Uh, when the local fire brigade comes and if they see that there is no parapet, they are directly requiring the closely located facade protection sprinkler. Uh, it, postponed your, it, it, it may postpone uh, the opening of your building. They are really uh, strict for this issue. That's why it is also your responsibility as an architect to decide uh, whether uh, a parapet you will have or you need to inform the mechanical designer accordingly. 